We have just discussed the translational system. Now we'll see the mathematical modeling of the rotational motion. The elements of this system are moment of inertia I or J, unit is kg meter to the power 4, torsion of spring is k, newton per radian, newton meter per radian, damper is B or C. Similar to mass, we have a moment of we have moment of inertia of J in a system. And since the mass has a rigid body, the moment of inertia is also represented by a rigid body. So only one displacement is required to define the motion completely. So that is why we have shown theta here and theta here. So whenever you see the J letter, you replace both sides by same uh, displacement variable equal to theta. Because only one variable is required to define the motion completely. We know that torque is equal to I multiplied by alpha, where I is the moment of inertia and alpha is the angular acceleration. Both a torque is dependent on the time and alpha is dependent on time, where I is a property, geometric property which is remain constant and does not change with respect to time. So we have T of T is equal to R into T square theta divided by dt square. If we take a Laplace transform with initial condition equal to zero, we get T of Laplace transform of T of T is Ts is equal to R into S square. This is second order, so we'll get S square into theta S i square or j square this i square or j square is the impedance of the moment of inertia so whenever you find j we have a impedance equals to either i square or either j as we know that uh, spring and the damper both are flexible therefore we require minimum two variable one is theta one and one is theta two and torque is applied on theta one side so naturally theta one is more than theta two this uh, concept is same as your translational motion So here torque is proportional to torque is proportional to k times theta one minus theta two. If we take a Laplace transform, we'll get if we take a Laplace transform, we get a T of S equal to T T of T is equal to T of S K. Theta one T is replaced by theta one S and theta two is replaced by theta two S, where K is called as the impedance of spring. So for J we have impedance J square, for K we have impedance equals to same as K. Similarly, we have a damper, same arrangement, which is used in translational. This is also flexible, so we require two variable, one is theta 1 and one is theta 2. The torque is applied on theta 1, so theta 1 is more than theta 2. So net difference is theta 1 minus theta 2. Damper is represented by either letter B or C. So we have a torque of T is equals to C times theta 1 dot T minus theta 2 dot T. If you take a Laplace transform, we'll get T of S equal to C into S. S represents the derivative. Theta 1 S minus Theta 2 S. So here this C S is called as the impedance of damper. Or B S is also called as impedance of damper. Analogy between translational system and rotational system. We'll divide the translational system and rotational system in two parts. And we write elements, impedance, elements, impedance. In translational system, mass is represented by M. And its impedance is M S square. In rotational system, Moment of inertia is represented by I and its impedance is I, I square J square. Since it is S J square and M S square, they are the analogous quantity. Spring in translational and the spring in the rotational, only this case is the linear spring is used and this case the torsional is used. But in both cases, impedance is remain same, that is K. Damper is either uh, represented by B or C. In both situations, its uh, impedance is BSCS or BSCS. Now let's consider the variables and its Laplace transform for the translational and rotational system. The variable in the translational system is force F of T, whose Laplace transform is F of S. The force is replaced in rotational by torque T of T, and its impedance is T of S. In a translational displacement is represented by X of T, impedance is X of S. Linear displacement is replaced by angular displacement theta t and its impedance is theta s. Linear velocity is represented by x dot t, its Laplace transform is s, x times s. The angular velocity is represented by theta dot t which is equals to omega and its impedance is s times theta s. Acceleration is represented by x double dot t, impedance is, since it's a second derivative, we have s square x of s. Angular acceleration is represented by alpha which is the second derivative of angular displacement. Since second derivative, we have s square theta s. Consider here one example in which we want to find out the transfer function theta of s 
with the torque as an input and we have one damper here one uh, rod here this is one shaft over which k is written and we have one damper the input is t of t and the angular displacement at input is theta 1 over the angular displacement over j is theta 2 now whenever we have got k on the shaft it means that the shaft is flexible and in that case the shaft is replaced by an equivalent spring and then we have the spring which is connected with the moment of inertia then we have a damper since j is a rigid body we require only one displacement variable so only one displacement variable shown is theta 2 and show that theta 2 on both sides on left hand side as well as left right hand side and we will remove the middle one check whether the all the displacements are defined correctly or not as far as spring is concerned we have displacement theta 1 and theta 2 and torque is applied on th uh, theta 1 so theta 1 is more than theta 2 so net displacement of the spring is theta 1 minus theta 2 j is the rigid body it has one displacement damper required two displacement out of that one is theta 2 and other is ground so all the displacements are defined correctly now since theta 1 is more than theta 2 our first term in the our equation is theta 1 and second term is theta 2 we are using the impedance method the sum of impedance around theta 1 multiplied by theta 1 as minus sum of impedance between theta 1 and theta 2 as ps sum of impedance around theta 1 so we have to consider all elements which are the displacement equal to theta 1 there is only one element which has the displacement equal to theta 1 that is equal to k so impedance of k is k multiplied by theta 1 as minus now between theta 1 and theta 2 there is only one element k between theta 1 and theta 2 both so that is why the sum of impedance between theta 1 and theta 2 is k so this is k multiplied by theta 2 s and the torque is applied on theta 1 so this is t of s this is our equation number 1 the second equation is minus sum of impedance between theta 1 and theta 2 multiplied by theta 1 s plus sum of impedance around theta 2 multiplied by theta 2 s equal to 0 our first term as conventional method is same this is minus k times theta 2 s multiplied by theta 1 s this is the only element between theta 1 and theta 2 when you have to write down the impedance about theta 2 we have to find the uh, which element has the displacement connected to theta 2 so k has a displacement connected to theta 2 j has a displacement theta 2 one of the displacement of damper is theta 2 so impedance of j is j square impedance of c is c s and the impedance of k is k multiplied by theta 2 s is our equation number 2 we can arrange equation 1 and 2 in the matrix form and by applying the Kramers rule we can find out theta 1 s is equal to T s the and 0 minus k upon j s square plus c s plus k and this is standard determinant of variable matrix once we solve this determinant we get T s multiplied by j s square plus c s plus k second term is 0 and denominator is k times j s square plus c s plus k minus minus c is plus and again minus only minus k square and we can replace that theta T s here so we get theta 1 s upon T s is equals to j s square plus C s upon k plus k upon determinant of this matrix that is the required transfer consider a second example in which we want to find out we want to find out theta 2 s theta 2 s by theta 1 s and the j 1 is a moment of inertia connected between k 1 and k 2 k 1 is has one end fix and other is connected to j 1 so one displacement is 0 other displacement is theta 1 j 1 has only one displacement that is theta 1 k2 has two displacement one is theta 1 and one is theta 2 j2 has one displacement that is theta 2 k2 has only one dis two displacement one is theta 2 and other is ground here j1 and j2 both are rigid body so they have same displacement so we will start writing theta 1 that is j on both sides that is theta 1 theta 2 and we will cancel out the middle term similarly we will write down theta 2 on both sides of j2 so this one is also theta 2 and similarly on the right hand side we have theta 2 now once we write this one our arrangement is very clear to define the motions of the displacement required for all bodies we have a standard equations that we have in the last problem now the sum of impedance around theta 1 so theta 1 we have seen k1 is connected j1 is connected and k2 is connected so we have j1 s square plus k1 plus k2 multiplied by theta 1 s 
when you have to find out the sum of difference between theta 1 and theta 2, there is only one element k2 which has both displacement theta 1 and theta 2. So, it is k2 multiplied by theta 2s equal to ts. In the second equation, our first term repeats as it is, that is minus k2 multiplied by theta 2s and when you have to write down the, the sum of impedance about theta 2, so theta theta 2, we have to write down the theta 2, the k2 has one displacement theta 2, j2 itself has a theta 2 and this k has also theta 2. So, we have impedance of j is j2 is j2 s square plus k2 plus k3 multiplied by theta 2 s is equals to 0. Since we are interested in theta 2 s by theta 1 s, so we will continue with equation number 2. So, this k2 into theta 1 s on the right hand side will become 0 and is equals to j2 s square plus k2 plus k3 is equals to theta 2 s and we can rear rearrange this term as per the requirement theta 2 s upon theta 1 s. So, we will get k2 upon j2 s square plus k2 plus k3.